Oh boy, it's been a long time that we've been in this park. Welcome back to Jurassic Park Grand Canyon and welcome to the last speed build episode of this park. Yeah, I'm going to talk you through this today, but now let's start with this wonderful speed build today. Now, we are going to have a good time because I'm going to talk about everything related to this park. In case you're new to the series, um, this has been my biggest uh, sandbox park without any mods from the very beginning of Jurassic World Evolution 2. And now as we are approaching the next major DLC and the next major free update, I thought it's time to wrap this thing up um, in order to, you know, focus on some new stuff uh, because there's so much cool new stuff coming with the DLC and the update um, that I was, you know, focusing a bit more on finishing up old projects. So that meant um, finishing up this one first and then next up in the coming days is also going to be Tiny Park. Uh, in case you guys are into that one as well, you know now that I'm about to end these two. But this park over here has been the Grand Canyon one and I chose this map at the beginning because it was a very specific challenge um, in order to, you know, uh, use the space available. And this space is really not the easiest to build a great park in, uh, especially without mods. Um, we, we have a couple of things that have been improved um, over the time, which we are going to utilize in today's build but also in the build between this and the tour um, which um, most of all is going to be uh, the individual trees and all the new props and stuff you can see I'm building like a little landing strip over here um, this one was meant to be something you know for uh, yeah for, for just the um, making sure that everything is um, kind of in line uh, with the project because we have like a landing pad for helis and stuff but we don't really have like a um, airplane landing pad and I think this one um, would work pretty well even though the kind of angle of the um, landing strip is maybe not the best ever um, but I'm going to show you in the real-time part um, most likely it's going to be a very challenging uh, airplane Bought landing strip thingy but it's just like for very small machines you know just to bring the people uh, in here as well as like a second one because it is rather large and um, yeah I really hope you guys enjoyed this series I know there has been like a huge break in between I'm very sorry for that but um, it just kind of you know there were so many new things and um, I just wanted to make sure that this you know deserves the uh, kind of detail and level of detail and also um, my time um, that you know this project is really meant to have because I, I started very strong I guess with a lot of ideas and most of them worked out pretty decently some of them didn't uh, which is mostly down to the game um, and all the restrictions and stuff and there are a couple of things I need to do but I will definitely do them off screen because oh my god they are ridiculously um, finicky to do and for time lapse especially in Jurassic World Evolution 2 it's not the best to do, let's put it that way. It's just very hard to achieve and all these kind of little details and stuff. Um, also very annoying with the camera movement. So I'm going to make this off screen and then we will have a final tour, which hopefully you know, uh, is respecting the overall project. Um, you can see I'm just um, painting in another little habitat over here, making sure that we have another enclosure. This one is going to be, I think it's for the Inquadodon. Um, You'll see in a couple of seconds where I'm going to make them. Uh, I think it was Iguanodon and I forgot which other one I put in here. Um, I, I didn't really pay too much attention on, on which specific species I wanted to have in here. I just wanted to have another herbivore uh, habitat in between. Um, we've got the big aviary area and then I decided to put the monorail in. You know that it has been a big debate for me from the very beginning if I put the monorail in or not. And I just tested it now and I feel like I'm going to keep it. Um, Unfortunately, I needed to make this space over here uh, available for the monorail. It's kind of ridiculous. This building takes up so much space, even though it's just looking as if, you know, it doesn't take much space. But in the end, it does um, just because of the footprint. Um, so, yeah, you always have to plan in like a huge amount of space. And then I decided to, you know, use that space in the back here to, um, in fact, just have a a lot of, uh, you know, um, backstage buildings here, making sure that this is like where, you know, everything would be brought to. And I decided also to not make that like super detailed. I just put a lot of uh, facility buildings in, gonna um, keep that separated from the rest of the park, like making like a big uh, kind of, you know, fence in between, putting some gates in. You'll see that in a second. Um, and that's about it. Uh, because I really don't like also these areas in there. You can see this is the uh, daytime setting and you can see that 
huge part of the park is already in the shadow, which, well, to be honest, isn't the best thing to have, especially for like tours and stuff. Um, I'm, I'm still going to make the tour in daytime, I guess, because this is mostly the time where I can see a lot. And um, yeah, this is where you can see I'm going to paint the, the monorail in. Um, one thing I try to do all the time is like uh, bend it in a way that it has enough supports because sometimes the supports just vanish away. As you can see over here, I tried my best to just make it in a way that we have some supports because it looked kind of weird if there's like such a huge floaty piece in between. You can see I, I was trying to find my way through here and then just making sure that we have a nice little connection. And as you can see in the end, I think it doesn't look necessarily bad. I think it looks kind of neat. Um, I'm just I'm just kind of wondering uh, if, you know, if there is a future in which we can lower or raise the monorail uh, manually, because, oh my god, it's just like so annoying that it is like so super high. Oh yeah, it was the Amargosaurus as well, um, together with the Iguanodon. I even have no idea if they go together, but I'm quite sure that you guys will tell me in the comments down below if those two could go together in a habitat. I haven't just tested, I just like legit kind of made sure that we have some eggs and put the animals in. Um, I will also pay a bit of attention to, uh, you know, making sure that they have um, the dedicated fauna and foliage and whatnot, you know, just making sure they can live and thrive in there. That's basically the main idea. But yeah, you can see I'm just trying to make uh, things a bit more finished in here. Um, also, I just kind of waited for that and it's a kind of a... <laughs> since I deleted all the mods again, uh, there is not the instant kind of, uh, you know, um, breeding and all this kind of stuff, uh, or instant incubation, I should say. Um, I'm not sure what exactly is coming with the next free update, but I know that they have optimized a lot of things now, so maybe they will bring this in organically. I'm not sure if they do, but yeah. So you can see, by the way, I'm just making sure that the backstage area Area is a bit more nicely connected here to the buildings just making sure that we have some roads connecting those um, and just in general making sure that everything is just kind of finished as you can see I'm putting like a wall over here put a fence in the same goes on this side just kind of half roundish um, I'll make them a tiny bit more detailed with some watchtowers and stuff so it looks a bit more official um, but I also decided to just paint a lot of like foliage in because that's like the shadow area of the park um, where it would make sense to have it and also I put down two more facilities or uh, amenities is just kind of something people always um, kind of, uh, you know, uh, are annoyed about. So this is something I will, by the way, do off screen as well. Just making sure that we put a lot of amenities in. But here we are already in the real time part. So um, we will jump over in a second. And uh, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the speed build so far. And let's now go into the game. All right, so we are in a real-time part and we're just sitting inside of one of the monorails. I just thought, you know, why not start with the monorail indeed? Down, down here we can see the Brachiosaurus and uh, I'm just jumping out in a second. As you can see, this is where the monorail is now going. Um, so yeah, we've, we've built quite a lot, uh, including this landing strip. As you can see, uh, I'm not entirely sure what exactly I thought, but this is like, <laughs> this is not like... A little bit this is just legit impossible to land over here I'm not even sure what I'm going to do with it maybe I'm just keeping it as like a helicopter landing strip or whatever like imagining I mean even if the pilot is like in absolutely insane pff, I think landing over here is not really working that well I'm not even sure why exactly I did it so maybe maybe we just assume that this is pff, I don't know kind of testing or something um, it just doesn't work but um, <laughs> I, I don't know why I didn't really pay attention to that. I might just delete that one and put a new one in here in the back because there's a lot more space where it could work. Like they could come in here, for example, and then just land somewhat in this direction. That could definitely work. There is like enough space for that. But yeah, so this is the backstage area I did. Um, a couple of little things I want to do, but I think it's fine the way it is. Actually, we can in the meantime. Let me just grab one bigger one. So we can just have like a little road that goes eventually here. There you go. I really want the roads to connect, to be honest, because that would be so much more realistic. But okay, so this one is going to connect here as well. And then we are going to have that one from here connecting, well, all the way to here. And the same, oops, the same goes. Wait, can I have a connection to this side, please? There you go, more whatever, it's like kind of a bit of a triangle shape to make them go there. And the same goes to this side. I just totally forgot about that. Let me just take the smaller one as well. 
um, straight and then it's kind of weird. I don't know if you see that, but I have like a little bit of a ghosting effect around the uh, path if I'm quite far away. It just kind of feels a little bit weird. I, I don't know if you can see that on screen or in the video. I think it's because of the park is so filled up or whatever. Um, it just is a little bit weird. Um, it's also kind of fun that I only have like a couple of little stars uh, because there's really not that like appeal is good, but everything else, amenities and stuff is like shitty. So I got to have to put some emphasis on that, um, making sure. But you can see I'm just like having 442 guests uh, in here from the capacity, which is just ridiculous um safety rating is bad and you know i gotta have to get rid of the animals but this is something for the future and not for now um i think it just works quite okay with the monorail again i'm not the biggest fan of it but in terms of uh, overall like movement and, and park transportation i guess we do have to have it again i'm not sure what i'm going to do with this landing strip here um I, I, I can't find an argument to keep it there. Maybe if you guys have an argument why we could keep it, nevertheless, please put it in the comments. Uh, or maybe you just think the pilots are so insane that they can go all the way down here, then grab that thing up and bring it to a halt in front of that wall. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe Tom Cruise can do that, but uh, I think everyone else can't, especially not with guests. But yeah, you guys can let me know in the comments down below. I'm also not 100% sure if I keep that one the way it is. Um, like this big tank here. Now, that should be it, guys, uh, for today's video. Again, this should be the end of the time lapses of Jurassic Park Grand Canyon. I'm definitely going to um, build some more stuff uh, in the future. Maybe not in this Grand Canyon Park anymore, but uh, definitely in other parks. And Tiny Park or Tiny Zoo or Tiny Jurassic Park or whatever on Sauna is definitely going to um, come back as well. So uh, no worries about that one in case you did worry about this. And yeah, I really hope you guys uh, enjoyed today's episode. I really hope you enjoy uh, your time and you are looking forward to the new movie and you're looking forward to the new DLC. I'm looking forward to it especially and I can't wait to see it. I haven't seen it yet. Um, so many people have, maybe I haven't, but uh, I, you know, officially it's not even cinema, but people find a way, I guess. Uh, yeah, that should be it. I hope you guys enjoyed this and if you want to see more of Jurassic World Evolution 2, I know I've, I've had a little break here, but don't go, don't worry too much. I'll be back. I'll be back uh, with it very soon. Um, so yeah, uh, keep your eyes on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, have a good time and goodbye everyone.